There are a lot of memorable death scenes in movie history, but it's often the moment right before a character dies that makes them so iconic. In that instant, they realize that they are about to die and have no choice but to accept their fate. From silent surprise to heroic decisions and delirious laughter, here are 10 of the best I'm dead and I know it movie moments. Speed is one of the most iconic films of the 1990s, starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock who are on a bus that needs to drive at speeds of over 50 miles per hour to avoid setting a bomb off. Of course, the rigged bus will have to drop below 50 eventually, either because it runs out of gas or because it hits an obstacle. So the LAPD are in a race against the clock to find the terrorists behind this cruel act and save the people on the bus. When Officer Harry Temple has managed to track down the terrorist's name and home address, he gathers his squad and they go to raid the house. When they get there, they find the house empty, and lo and behold, the bomb-making terrorist has rigged his home as well. And it's only at the last moment that Temple notices a small red blinking light. When he realizes what it is, he knows it's too late to get out. He doesn't even try to run or warn the others, but just stares at the red light with hopeless eyes and a quivering lip until it all blows up a moment later. James Cameron's Aliens is one of the most thrilling movies of all time, full of intense moments of action and inevitably a lot of death scenes. But none of them is as hard to swallow as the dual demise of Lieutenant Gorman and Private Vasquez. After freezing up during the Xenomorph assault earlier on, Gorman deservedly receives a lot of hostility, but he tries to make up for his mistake when he and Vasquez end up trapped in a ventilation tunnel surrounded by Xenomorph drones. After he's fired his last shot, they both know that there's no way out. In a strangely touching moment, Gorman pulls out a grenade and he and Vasquez embrace as they grip it together just before it explodes, taking out several xenomorphs with him. One of the reasons why Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy became so popular is the fact that it never takes itself too seriously. Not even during the final battle between Spidey and Norman Osborn's supervillain alter ego, the Green Goblin. During what appears to be the end of the fight in the first movie, a cornered Osborn feigns remorse, begging Peter Parker for forgiveness for his terrorist acts while secretly preparing his bladed glider to attack Peter from behind. But it seems he forgot that Spider-Man has Spidey senses, allowing Peter to somersault over the glider, causing it to gore Norman instead. Just before it does, Osborn seems to have a moment of clarity as he realizes he's about to die. He quietly says, Oh, Raimi's decision to remove all background sound effects for this brief moment almost makes it seem as if Osborn is breaking the fourth wall before being impaled by his own glider. Oh. Goodfellas' Tommy DeVito is a raging psychopath. So his death had to come eventually, but it was still strangely depressing when it did. He's tricked into believing he's about to be made near the end of the film, but instead gets whacked in retaliation for killing Billy Bats. Cody Cicero and another man take him down to the basement where the mafia initiation ceremony typically takes place. But once Tommy opens the door and sees that the room is empty, he quickly realizes what's going on. Since there's no one waiting for his ceremony, he knows he's about to die, letting out an anguished, oh no but he barely finishes it before Tutty puts a bullet in his head from behind. Joe Pesci won an Oscar for his performance as Tommy DeVito, and it's only thanks to his incredible talent that you can feel slightly sad about his character's death, since DeVito is a violent maniac who clearly had it coming. Inglorious Bastards is one of Tarantino's most popular movies, and one of the best and most tense scenes in the movie is the one in the basement bar. In occupied France, British commando lieutenant Archie Hickox is at the bar where he meets a fellow undercover agent, German actress Bridget von Hammersmark. Since Hickox is not a native German speaker, his accent and mannerisms attract attention and arouse suspicion. But everything seems to be going well enough until he makes one fatal mistake. Just as the Nazi soldiers are about to leave, Hickox blows his cover with one small hand gesture when he orders three glasses. The gesture gives him away as a British soldier, and they all realize that nobody can leave the room now that the secret is out. Upon his realization, Hickox pauses, then sits back in his chair and grabs a cigarette, saying, Well, if this is it, old boy, I hope you don't mind if I go out speaking the kings. Knowing that this is it, he takes a drag, finishes his scotch, and then kicks off the shootout that will leave everyone but one person in the tavern dead. 
If you know you're about to die, you might as well enjoy one last cigarette and finish your scotch. Well, if this is it, old boy, I hope you don't mind if I go out speaking to kings. Okay, technically, Blade Runner's Roy Batty is a replicant and therefore not alive in the strict sense of the word. But since one of the film's central themes is the idea of a synthetic human evoking more humanity than an actual flesh and blood person, it seems appropriate that his demise is one of the most iconic final moments. Batty knows that his inbuilt four year lifespan is about to end, and after saving Deckard from falling to his death, he delivers one of the most poetic death soliloquies in cinematic history. In it, he quietly laments the fleeting nature of existence, and upon realizing that his last moment has come, he ends with the words, Time to die. Time to die. After more than a decade, Iron Man's era came to an end in Avengers Endgame, but someone like MCU's beloved Tony Stark obviously needed a big final scene. With so much battling going on already, there was no point in giving him a big fight scene, so Marvel decided to make his last moment a big one in a different way. During the pivotal moment of the battle, Tony is kneeling in front of Thanos, as the Mad Titan is getting ready to snap half the universe into oblivion. But as he says that he is inevitable in a self-assured tone and tries to snap his fingers with a smug little smile, he realizes that he's been duped and that Tony has just snatched the stones from his gauntlet. He stares at his opponent in disbelief, and Tony replies, And I am Iron Man before erasing Thanos and his army with a snap of his fingers. Based on what he's seen before, Tony knows that his chances of surviving this moment are pretty much zero, so when he takes his last breath, he knows he's about to die. Nonetheless, he doesn't let go until he knows it worked, and Pepper assures him that everything is okay and he can rest now. It's a very emotional moment after a heroic act that was the perfect ending to Iron Man's time in the MCU. At the end of Luc Besson's Leon the Professional, the titular assassin is tragically gunned down by the psychopathic DEA agent Norman Stansfield just a few steps away from freedom. But in this case, the bad guy is punished right away. As Stansfield stands over Leon and watches him die with a grin on his face, Leon hands him a gift from young Matilda. It turns out to be a grenade pin, but when the confused Stansfield opens up Leon's vest to find a cluster of armed grenades, it's too late for him. He barely has time to react at all, so when he realizes he's about to die, all he manages to say before he blows up is, shit. Considering how incredibly intense Stansfield is throughout the entire movie, it seems ironic that he's so strangely calm about his imminent death. Many have tried, but no one has managed to truly defeat England's secret weapon yet. Instead, James Bond has sent many villains to hell over the past six decades, and one of the most memorable death scenes is Max Zorin's fall off the Golden Gate Bridge in A View to Kill. Played by the great Christopher Walken, this deranged antagonist attacks 007 with an axe atop San Francisco's most iconic landmark. But it's Zorin who's eventually left clinging to the side of the bridge's framework, and as he starts slipping, he lets out a maniacal cackle, as if he can't believe that this is how it ends. A moment later, he loses his grip and screams as he plunges several hundred feet into the San Francisco Bay below. When it comes to villain's death scenes, it doesn't get much better than Hans Gruber in the original Die Hard. He's as intelligent and resourceful as he is bad, and eventually meets a deservedly violent end. Stumbling backwards during the final scenes of the film, Gruber crashes through a window and is about to fall 700 feet down but manages to cling onto Holly's watch. Just as she's about to go down with Gruber, John McClane saves the day when he unclasps the watch from her wrist and thus sends Gruber to his death. It could have all been over in a matter of seconds, but director John McTiernan decided to shoot the scene in slow motion and created one of the most iconic death scenes in the process, because he gives viewers the opportunity to watch Gruber's face as he realizes that he's about to die. The scene's made even more perfect by the fact that actor Alan Rickman's terrified expression was sort of real. As you probably guessed, the scene was shot in front of a blue screen and Rickman was told that he would be dropped onto an airbag on the count of three. But instead, McTiernan decided to have him dropped on the count of one to get an authentic reaction. It may have been a slightly cruel decision, but you can't deny that it was a clever one as well, since it led to one of the arguably best moments in the Die Hard franchise. Be sure to comment down below and let us know if we've missed something. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching.